Okay, so the Silotophata is our first division for today. This and the next division we're going to do are not very well represented in our current flora. In fact, in the Silotophyta, there is only a single, single genus and a single species. That genus is Silotum, and the species is Nudum, the naked Silotum. It's a plant without leaves, which gives us the naked specific epithet. So it comes from a much richer Devonian flora, plant Devonian flora that was much richer in the Silotophyta. In fact, the Silotophyta are very similar to some of what we think are the first land plants. So the first land plant that we find, the first fossils that we find, is a little plant that's going to look a lot like Silotum. Was called Cooksonia, or is called Cooksonia, and it basically just occurs, um, consists of some stems with some sporangia on it unbranched stems with some sporangia on it. Silotum's a little more complex than that. So this is a plant that was had a lot more representatives or a division that had a lot more representatives in the Devonian. And that's about 360 to 395 million years ago, MYA. These are some of the first vascular plants, the first land plants that had vascular system in them. And, and for that reason, maybe we should really be doing them before the lycophyta, but they got switched this way some years ago and I haven't switched them back. So we're doing the silotophyta, even though they're the in some ways, the more primitive plants, they have more primitive characteristics than the lycophyta, we do them second. I said there's only one genus. There's actually two genera in this. The one that we're going to do is Silotum nudum. There is another genus, Mesipterus. And this is one of the really weird pronunciations we have because spellings we have based on the pronunciation because it is not from a Western language. It's from um, the Malay language. And it's Mesipterus, the T is not pronounced in English. It starts with a T. Mesipterus. And I'll <clears throat> show you a species of Mesipterus at the very end. I wish we had one to look at in lab, but I've actually never even seen this plant myself. I've only seen a few pictures of it. So it's not very well known. I think there's a couple species of Mesipterus. But for us, we're only going to consider this one genus and species, Silotum nudum, only one genus in Silotum. So here it is, this is Silotum. Let me switch to white. And you can see where the naked name comes from, there are no leaves. There are little tiny outgrowths, perhaps you can see them from the stem. These are not leaves, they are called enations. We will have <clears throat> better pictures of them in a minute. And they're little non-vascularized blips of tissue. Not microfills, not megafills, not leaves. Enations, something different, unique to this plant, just little outgrowths of tissue. There are also some specialized kinds of sporangia, but well, I will call them for a moment sporangia. But they are specialized, and so maybe I should really write specialized sporangia. And they are going to be called synangia, S-Y-N, with or together. Synangia, and I'll explain why in a minute. They're not very complex, but they are a little different than we've seen in other cases. And the plant also has the most clear dichotomous branching we are going to see all semester. It has got really equal dichotomies. Every branch is equal. Every time it branches, there are equal dichotomies. So a dichotomous branching. You could even say that dichotomous branching was defined for this plant. It is so archetypal. 
Here's our life cycle. It is a homosporous life cycle. And so we also know that the gametophyte is exosporic. Here's meiosis and fertilization. So we have the haploid portion. Over here, the diploid. Over here. <clears throat> and here is our homosporous gametophyte with antheridia and archegonia on the same gametophyte. We'll look at this a little more detail in a bit. Here is our sporophyte. So the organism we were just looking at in the last photograph was the sporophyte. Here's a nice diagram showing our dichotomous branching. of the sporophyte. <clears throat> On that sporophyte, there are no large leaves, but there are these little blips of tissue. In this case, under this sporangium, they are shown branched. And these are the anations. And they have no vascular system. So the vascular system, in fact, runs right up to the base of the leaf, but it doesn't enter the leaf. So just a little blip of tissue there. <clears throat> Here is our sporangium, but now we're going to call this a synangium because it's composed of three fused sporangia. So sin with her together is an indication that the thing is composed of separate spaces. So there's three separate spaces in there. <clears throat> and you can see them in this diagram. My voice is going again this morning. One, two, <coughs> three. And you can see the lobes here also when it's not open. Three separate sporangia. We'll look at that in more detail in one second. Underneath the ground, there are rhizomes. <clears throat> here, are, here are the anations. That's probably the best picture we've got of them, and the synangia. Of course, the stem <clears throat> is there also. Show the same thing again, but now with a fertile, a fertile place of the uh, organism, the synangium. And in the, <clears throat> that synangium occurs in the axle of these branched enations, but you don't have to worry about whether they're branched or not. We just need to know that they're enations and not leaves. Meiosis takes place within the synangia, within the spaces in the synangium. So let's just first of all label the synangium. And then let's look inside a mature synangium over here on the right. So if we look inside that synangium, we see that in this section there are two spaces. There's actually going to be three of them, but the third one's out of the plane of section, so we don't see it. So there are, here there are two, even right here, two small spaces with myospores. The small spaces, those, there's a Greek word for that. 
and we're not going to call them small spaces before, we're going to call them the Greek word, which is lockable. ULE is a diminutive ending, LOC means space. So space or cavity, space is good for us. So small space. A locule is just an enclosed small space. So we haven't differentiated up till now between the angium, the box, and the space that that box encloses. But we are going to start differentiating now because we have cases like this where we have to talk about more than one box, more than one sporangium fused together and say that there are three locules in this synangium and those three locules represent the interior spaces of three sporangia that are fused. That's our interpretation of them. We're going to see that word locule again a number of other places. It's not always going to mean a case for <clears throat> myospores, although that's, that's common. That's very common. But any kind of small enclosed space can be called a locule. <clears throat> it's a descriptive term. It's a descriptive term, a small space. OK, so we have, early on, before the formation of the mature locule, we have in the center of the synangia, we have sporaginous tissue, which means there are the sporocytes here. And the sporocytes are diploid. And our spores <clears throat> are going to be produced from meiosis and are going to be haploid. So the sporocytes yeah. are the spore mother cells labeled there. <clears throat> the sporocytes are the spore mother cells. And we can, I do not like that term for these organisms because it is not commonly used in the lower plants. The spore mother cells is a term that is used in the higher plants, the gymnosperms, the cone-bearing plants, for instance, and the angiosperms. And we are going to try to avoid it completely in this class. We are just going to call these things sporocytes. Here we have again the synangium. It's kind of drawn strangely in this picture. They never look like that. They're never set on side like that. But there are the three sporangia there. They, this author called it a bract. I'm not going to get into the term bract like now, but it's any nation. We may talk about bracts by the end of the class. Here's our locule. Our locules, the space is the locule, and then the spores. And of course, those are myospores inside. There would be a third locule. The nation would be down here, and it just hasn't been cut in this section. If you look closely here, you can see there's the vascular tissue, and it runs up. Well, that way, actually, it runs in there. What I wanted to show you is that it runs up here. It does not go into the enation. The spores are shed, and we get the gametophyte. It's homosporous. which means there's one gametophyte with both the antheridia and it doesn't have an arrow to an archegonium, does it? That's weird. There's an archegonium down here. I think we'll see a better picture of it in a minute. This is another archegonium. Here we can see a little bit of the difference. Here again is the gametophyte. Here is an archegonium. You see it's got that neck at the top. 
Here's an antheridium. It's much larger, and it's got a larger locule on the inside. Again, here's an antheridium, kind of larger, sticks off the side of the gametophyte. So they're not that hard to tell apart. I'm not going to be asking you to tell them apart, but I hope that you can see the difference here, and we'll see a diagram in a minute. Now, this next slide, it's, I worked so hard to get you, I, had, I did a lot of work in Photoshop so that you could see clearly the antheridium archegonia on this slide. And if you look at it on your computer, you actually can. You cannot see it when it's projected up here. But when you look at it on your, on your slide, you will be able to see down here there's an archegonium. And many other places on here there are antheridia. Here's a nice one. And the difference is what we've just kind of seen. Now looking down, let's imagine we were looking here at this, but we were looking down like this, or down at it like this. And in those cases, the archegonium will look something like this. It'll have some cells, and you'll see a kind of a little hole in the center, right, which would be the canal. So this would be the neck cells. There'd be a couple cells there. But, and the antheridium, when you look down on it, would be larger, and it would have lots of denser tissue in there, which would be the cells which are going to form the sperm. So they're distinct, and look, please look at that beautiful picture which I worked so hard on on your computers. Here we see a later stage of development, but you can see here, here was the archegonium now containing the zygote. So you, in this case, again, it's still got neck cells, it's still got that lower egg, it's still surrounded by all the sterile tissue, but it's really tiny compared to the other groups we've been seeing, really tiny compared to the bryophytes, for instance. The embryo continues to develop, embedded in the gametophyte. We still have a foot, that's that place where it's connected and nutrient transfer is taking place. They call this a calyptra. You know, it's, I'm, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to talk about calypteras that take place when they're actually carried up on top of the moss capsule. <clears throat> it's just a little bit of the development of the archegonium. And so we get, eventually, the sporophyte. Growing out of the gametophyte and becoming its own independent organism. Eventually producing the immature synangia. And we're back to where we are. We were at the beginning with our sporocytes, our diploid sporocytes, which are going to undergo meiosis. So very, really, it's a very straightforward life cycle. This diagram shows us our gametophyte, oops, I don't want that. Here's our gametophyte. And here's the sporophyte. Very young sporophyte. A young sporophyte looks like a gametophyte. <laughs> so the archegonium would be down in this region, and there'd still be a foot connecting them together. But by this stage, the sporophyte is almost ready to come up out of the ground and start photosynthesizing and become independent of our gametophyte. Here it is again, really even less clear. Let me see what I did. I, green was the gametophyte, was the sporophyte. So here's the, the sporophyte. Kind of really makes it hard to see any details there. And here's the gametophyte.
and here are some antheridia. Sticking off of the gametophyte. So the archegonium, of course, would have been down here, not captured in this section. Students draw a life cycle. Who had that brilliant idea? Let's take a break and let you draw it, and then we'll finish up this and go on to the Equisita Fida. Very early break today, so you can draw the life cycle. Okay, did you draw the life cycle? Why, I didn't hear a lot of yeses. <laughs> Not a good idea not to draw the life cycle. We'll have to put some drawing the life cycle questions on the quizzes, Ms. Rushforth. That's on next week is the next quiz on Tuesday. So meiosis fertilization, diploid below, haploid above. Fertilization produces the zygote. The zygote grows into the sporophyte. The sporophyte has not sporangia, but synangia. Or I wrote it plural, IA, synangium is okay too. Within the synangium, we're gonna start writing this in fact, they have sporocytes here. So within the synangia, we have the sporocytes, and the sporocytes undergo meiosis. From meiosis, we get the spores or the myospores. There's only one type because it's homosporous, and there's only one type of gametophyte. But on the gametophyte, we have both the archegonium and the antheridium. Archegonium producing the egg, antheridium the sperm, uniting in fertilization. Very straightforward life cycle, dibionic life cycle. The only two things we're doing a little different here is kind of synangium and sporocytes. Remember, we're always going to start putting down sporocytes now. So we're thinking about what cells are undergoing meiosis. Our last organism is Mesipterus, and here it is. Mesipterus, um, a melee word, as I say, from the melee language. Um, the common name, taken from the common name of the plant. And I'm not even sure how to interpret a lot of the stuff we see in these things. Are these, are these enations? I'm not really sure, but here is a sporangium or a synangium. Here you can see that a little better, a synangium. So those are probably, and those leaf-like things are probably enations. Here's the synangia down here, and the axle of those probably enations. It looks so big, I don't know if there's a vascular system there. Well, anyway, fascinating plant I know little about and would be interesting to learn more, Mesipterus. <clears throat> this stuff changes on the internet. Information becomes available every year new, and I haven't checked this year to see if there's really anything on Mesipterus. 